Well, hello and happy Tuesday, everyone watching. As you know, every Tuesday during the Our Promise campaign, we love to highlight a unique and wonderful nonprofit organization. And today we have the perfect one for all of you cat lovers out there. I am joined by Field Haven Feline Center and the lovely Executive Director Joy Smith. Hello, Joy. Hey, everyone. I'm here and I'm so glad to be here, Patrick. And this is fun. If you hear this little jingly bell in the background, it's because I'm playing with kittens. What else, right? <laughs> and I have to say that, you know, uh, National Cat Day is right around the corner. So we thought you all would be the perfect nonprofit to highlight. And thank you for dressing up. Your ears are wonderful. Oh, that's standard. That is standard um, attire around here. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I should have put on my little blinky ones that have blinking lights. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Joy, let's start off by telling everyone who's tuning in, what is Field Haven Feline Center and what work do you all do? Well, we are a center, so we're, we are, yes, you can call us a rescue, a shelter, a adoption center, but we do a lot of different things, Patrick. We do everything about cats, so it's helping people with cats with any kind of problem, issue, question they have. So yes, we do rescue, we do, um, we do adoptions, but we also have a spay-neuter clinic, we have a very large um, help desk, which people help thing, help people with cat issues all day and every day. Um, we have TNR, which is Trap, Neuter, Return programs. Um, we do a lot of outreach to communities. So our, our, um, our mission is to engage and empower communities and people to um, take care of the cats in their community. So that's what we do. So it's, you know, everyone thinks of a, of a rescue or a shelter of being doing adoptions. Yes, we do that, but we do so much more. Anything cat. Anything cat. I love to hear that. Yes. And I, I see that we've been joined by one of your colleagues, Jeannie Schumacher. Hi, Jeannie. Thanks for being here. <laughs> it's so great to see you all. So anything cats. Now, can we talk about last year and sort of the ongoing pandemic? Because what we've heard, Joy, through so many of these nonprofits that we've been chatting with is that they've really had to get creative and, and pivot. Uh, given the ongoing pandemic, how have you all been affected uh, by COVID and how has your center been impacted? A big impact. And yes, you, 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 many people think about just the, the impact on people and stuff, but with animals, um, it really impacted us as well as shelters across the country. Pivot is the key word, Patrick, that we had to just stop what we were doing because volunteers couldn't come to help. We had to send staff home. We had to shut down our spay neuter clinics. We couldn't do our work, but there were still animals out there that needed help. So we did pivot and we grew on programs that we had already started, like our help desk, which is helping people out in the community. We're not just, I'm sorry, we can't help you and not take your cat. We started really growing those programs. We grew our foster program. We got more fosters. We helped people that found kittens on the street. We said, okay, here's what you can do. We can't come and get them, but we can teach you how to do it. Thank goodness for Zoom and all the things that we can do virtually. Um, and actually adoptions were really good last year, surprisingly, because people want, and people wanted to foster. I mean, what better way? You're stuck home with your family. Let's bring a litter <laughs> of kittens in. That kind of breaks up the tension a little bit and has a lot of fun. But the, um, the consequences to last year were also very huge on us this year. This has been a a really hard year for us and all animal shelters. And one of the big reasons is that, I mean, with all the normal things you think about with COVID, but just think, we had to shut down our spay neuter clinic last year. So you know what that meant? Cats having kittens, their kittens having kittens. And then when we got back online with our spay neuter clinic and providing spay neuter resources, vets were at a premium. There's an enormous vet shortage in this country right now. And that filters down to us trying to get staff. Plus the staff that we do have, we had to put in all sorts of social distancing guidelines. So what that did was cut our pro productivity. So where we could usually do 30 to 35 cats in a day, we could do yeah, 10, 12. And then all of those cats started having kittens this year. 
and it has been going on and on and combine that with our our um the climate you know a warmer drier climate so cats are having kittens longer um you know the the, the kitten season is now like 10 and a half months of the year where it usually wow. would be like nine maybe if we were lucky um so it's been a really challenging year. We have, we had, um, for us personally, we had You know, it is really interesting to hear as we work on some of those technical difficulties, how many programs that the center offers, including as you just heard Miss Joy speak about fostering, community and cat assistance, they have a sheltering team. Uh, kitten sitters, a spay and neutering assistant program. So really, really good work. And, and what I was just taken away by was how our weather climate, as well as the pandemic, has sort of exasperated the need uh, for the good work that they're doing. I mean, wow. You know, I also am a cat person, so I'm going to have to get out there. They're nearby in Lincoln, California, for those of us tuning in. So if those are in Northern California, be sure to check out that amazing shelter. We'll see if we can get Miss Joy back on, but as it is a Tuesday, I wanna tease the fact that we also have a prize. You know, every Tuesday we like to do a raffle for our state employee program participants. So maybe what we'll do in the meantime is get to that prize. And I see we've got our wheel up. So why don't we go ahead and give that wheel a spin and see who this Tuesday's winner is. Drum roll. It is looking like it's stopping on. Oh, it's a close one. Marcelo Rodriguez from the Franchise Tax Board. Congratulations, Maricela. Uh, your nonprofit receiving your donations is My Sister's House. What an amazing organization. We were able to highlight them just a few weeks ago. And folks, remember that every Tuesday and Thursday, you have a chance to win by tuning in to the Our Promise Live streams right here on Facebook. Looks like we might be getting Joy back just in the nick of time. How exciting. You know, prizes make everything better. <laughs> prizes and kittens. So today's a, a perfect opportunity to highlight both. Miss Joy, you're back. I'm sorry, it's like, you know, we're in the country here and the last few days our Wi-Fi has been a little spotty. It's usually really good, but sorry about that. Am I no coming across clear? At all. You are loud and clear. In your okay, absence, good. we were able to give out a very awesome prize mm -hmm. to, to one, of our, one of our program participants. So where we had left off, we were just talking about how the services that you provide were sort of exasperated last year, given the pandemic and then also our weather climate. Um, one of the questions that we always like to ask our program participants is, what do these dollars mean to you, right? Should, should the Our, Prom our Promise uh, donors decide that, you know, gosh, the work that you're doing is really inspiring to them. What, does, what do those monies mean for your center? How do they really help? It means that we operate, that we do, we provide the programs to the community because we are fully 100% funded by well, 98% funded, I'll say, by donations. We do have a thrift store that does a little bit of income and we do get a few grants. But other than that, it's your donations that help Gridley here. <laughs> oh, hi, Gridley. I understand Gridley's in a playroom right now with some yes, other Yes, he is. Is it possible to, to pan around and show everyone the room? Yeah. <laughs> How cool. Do you think these kittens have enough toys? <laughs> That's fabulous. So we see here an example of, of one of your one of your spaces where the kittens can play and recover and hang out with other friends and really enjoy healing. This one's in my house, so <laughs> I love that. Well, so Miss Joy, if people want to learn more about the wonderful work that you're doing, about all the programs that you offer, how can they do that? Where can they go to learn more about your center? Uh, well, fieldhaven.com, first of all, our website. And we have a couple of Facebook pages that are really great. We have our main Facebook, Fieldhaven Feline Center. And we have um, 
our shop, our thrift store, and our cafe adoption center. Oh, again, so sorry, technical difficulties. Look, it's the world we live in with technology. And as Ms. Joy mentioned, being out there in the country, sometimes there are connectivity issues, but fear not cat lovers, we will link to all of the important, important information about Field Haven Feline Center right here. You can see their website and we'll link to those multiple social media accounts that Joy spoke about. Again, congratulations to this week's winner and tune in Thursday at noon as we highlight another program and also give away another prize to a lucky winner. Thank you all for joining in. It's been a pleasure being with you all today. See you soon.